Yeah, so no problem. Welcome everybody to the IPFS Core Weekly Sync for Monday the 23rd of March 2020. We're going to talk about all the exciting stuff that is going on in IPFS and its implementations. Uh, so we have our list of initiatives. Uh, we're going to go through them and discuss where everything is. So the first one is uh, the upcoming ship releases. Mm -hmm. Uh, upcoming ship releases. Uh, yeah, so uh, GoIPFS uh, 0 0.5.0, RC1, is still a little bit late. Um, we are desperately trying to do both the final things in the DHC and wrap everything up. Um, we also have a couple more patches in terms of uh, migrations and uh, some of that needs to go in. Um, uh, we're almost ready with the uh, DAG import export code. So everything's landing, um, but it's still like, we're, yeah trying to like wrap things up. So hopefully by, well, probably not the end of today. In a couple of days maybe, we'll see. Um, uh, but we will continue sprinting until we can get something working. Um, and we call it like, we'll continue testing once the RC goes out, but we want something that like, we're pretty sure of. Because once we start asking people to test it, uh, they will start reporting bugs. And then we'll fix those bugs, um, which will destroy our focus. Uh, so yeah, that's the crap bit there. Anyone have a JS update? Uh, yeah, so I completely failed to do a patch release last week. Uh, I'm hoping to do a patch release this week. Um, now that we've merged the NFS into uh, the core, um, and we actually we've split the utils package out of the mono repo um, because it's depending on a bunch of different places. Um, so it needs to get a release be released independently. So we've moved that out because you know, nothing is for it. Um, also, I don't know, it, it might be uh, an implication that it's trying to do too much, but we can talk about that in another, another session. Uh, but yeah, so hopefully do a patch release this week instead. That was, that was that. Interesting. Cool, moving on. Uh, upgrade testing, uh, info and process. Uh, Rob, you'll need to. Yep, there you go. Um, yeah, we uh, shipped uh, VO3 uh, last week. Uh, the features are on the uh, on the release link that I've provided. So if you want to get into details on what actually the new feature sets are, that's that. Uh, we got uh, half of our our dev team back uh, when Anton came back. So we were at one of two, and now we're back to two of two. Uh, so that's we're back to full strength. Um, we have. Uh, and just finishing week one of our uh, version 0.4 sprint and uh, those features that we're working on are in our community feature planning document, which is linked there. And then we have recently onboarded Hugo uh, to try to bring uh, JavaScript browser slash node functionality. And that's a deliverable that we have this week to build out that spec. So that's what happened last week for test ground. Any, qu any questions? I have a question. When sure. test one becomes compatible with like browser nodes and JS nodes, does that mean that it will also be compatible with other languages? Um, or is it going to be specific for JS? It's for specifically JS. It is specifically okay. JS. Um, I do suspect that as part of the plan is that, you know, once we can get the JavaScript going, then the next one might be Rust. You know, or we can then onboard and switch. But I think right now we're working serially with the small team we have rather than parallel all over the board. Okay. Good question. Good question. Anybody else? My understanding right, is that the, the main things that need porting are like the SDK that does things like talk to Redis. So probably if there was someone in the ecosystem who was working on Rust things who wanted to help move that along, they could be shepherded along to do so because the copy implementations are already there in Go. Yeah, you're you're absolutely right. That's a, that's a function of labor. You know, it's a function of having team members that are willing to you know willing to do that. So right now we're just kind of um, you know we're, we're we're running as fast as we can, but this is as fast as we can run it. And we onboarded you know Hugo, so that's you know that was a, a bonus and a blessing on, on the surface. But it, again, if someone else wants to pick this up, I'm happy to 
onboard them and, and, and shepherd them and show them how, how to, you know, what we're doing and how to do it. Good question, Nadine, no, good question. All right, uh, moving on to content routing. Who can tell us about that? Yeah, so content routing is, we are like crunching right now to go through all the DHT changes, um, AutoNet changes, get everything polished up. Uh, we're doing a lot of testing and test ground right now, um, and then making tweaks as we um, discover issues through benchmarking. So we're crunching through that. Hopefully we'll get an RC, uh, as Steven already said this week. Do I see that Hydra is starting to raise its head? Yeah, uh, a little bit delayed. Um, I spent a lot of time trying to get my head around uh, Google Cloud infrastructure and Kubernetes, which I've never used before. But um, the Hydra, the Hydra, is in a state where we've deployed a couple of Hydras with a few heads each, um, and they are exposed publicly to the network, and they are getting peers and doing doing their thing, um, and that's. That's only happened today, basically, um, and uh, the I, I'm currently just working on um, hooking Grafana up to the metrics so that we can actually figure out if what we're doing is the right thing and if every, everything's going um, is, is not you know breaking or uh, <laughs> you know it's just stuff is stuff is happening properly. Um, so that's taken a little bit longer than I really wanted, but um, it's because of the way that. Google uh, Cloud is set up. Um, it would have been prohibitively expensive to uh, to use do it one way. So we've decided to do it another way that won't um, that will allow us to open up hundreds and hundreds of ports without costing thousands and thousands of pounds. Uh, so that's good. Um, yeah. So the next step is just to get Grafana working. Um, check that the metrics that we're getting are um, are, are not are are as expected and if there's more things we want to collect um, and then present it and be like that's that bit's done and we can move on to the um to, to another stage um, but yeah i've just been a little bit focused on that for at the moment so uh it's it's coming and we're gonna so at the moment we've got two hydras with a, a couple of heads each uh, the the plan is to ramp that up add more and more heads uh and you know keep monitoring it um to to check that it's it's all still working so um, yeah, early days, but uh, we're, we're getting there with, um, with actually having something available. That was awesome. Has anyone got any questions about that? Cool. Subdomain gateway, base 32, origin isolation. All right. Uh... Maybe I'll make it more interesting. <laughs> I'm giving you a regular update. Uh, uh, it's scheduled on uh, on track to, to be included in GoIP press 0.5. Uh, and I've shipped a beta of our browser extension, IP press companion, with initial preview of support of, for localhost subdomain gateway, which works everywhere. And to demonstrate that, uh, I got a box which is not able to resolve subdomains on localhost. However, I also have IPFS companion here, and this is a regular website which I now open. And what happened is IPFS companion sets up HTTP proxy, it sets up Go IPFS to act as HTTP proxy which means it's able to resolve localhost subdomains even if underlying operating system, uh, even if our operating system's uh, DNS resolver is not able to do that. That's probably just uh, a niche Linux distributions, but it means uh, it, even on those uh, niche uh, runtimes, uh, this type of proxy will still work. Uh, so there's a better version available for Firefox, Chromium users, well, we'll have to wait or uh, install it manually. Uh, my plan is to wrap this up 
and make a stable release as soon as possible. So uh, it takes about a week uh, to be accepted at Chrome Web Store, and we want to uh, sh like have support for those subdomains before Go IPFS is released. So that's my plan. So cool. Uh, let's swap updates. Ooh, you now say CID v1 is the default. Can you? It's, is it? I don't think they will flip the switch. One day. <laughs> One day. Baby steps. Baby steps. <laughs> yeah. Like we should throw like a huge CID v1 party when that is done. Uh, will this release or the next release support, um, like just proxying like ipfs.io, uh, or like just a regular domain name without having to have the dot ipfs.local or anything like that? Uh, the, the proxying of the domain uh, is problematic uh, because there is HTTPS and there are HSTS headers which tell the browser, hey, for this domain name, you only use HTTPS. And if you proxy it on the local host, to the local host, you won't have a TLS certificate. So Can we check that somehow? Like detect the error and then like back out? <laughs> yes. I really, really want to be able to go to like dist.ipfs.io and have it load from my Yes, yes, I know I'm going to get the, this is insecure warning, whatever, but. Uh, yeah, we for sure can make it. Uh, at least try to make it an option. We'll see. <laughs> New radical. Um, so the next one up is bit swap updates, though I don't seem to have any cool. Um, I can give them or a couple of them. Uh, yeah, so we have some uh, go performance improvements that happened this week uh, due to like deep rock files from uh, the gateways. We've noticed there's a want list leak um, that we need to track down before we actually get the release where like the want list tends to grow over time and it does shrink, but sometimes for some reason we just don't shrink it. Um, yeah, so it grows. Uh, and then I don't know if there's any fits in the JS side. Yeah, I don't uh, think that's been dirt. immersed in JS yet. Yeah, we have a dirt. Derek, we're just talking about the bit swap uh, improvements. Yeah. Sorry, you guys. Uh, it's up. Uh, I guess. Go on. Okay. Uh, we can come back to that. I think it's back. Okay, moving on then. Uh, so the stream content-based chunking research and improvements. Uh, yes. Uh, so last week I finished pretty much all the functionality for the DAG import-export. Uh, there are still a few uh, needs with um, progress on the CLI and things like that, which I'm wrapping up right now. Um, also, over the weekend, I had an actual epiphany how to uh, do proper multi-CPU streaming processing of an ordered stream. So now, actually, I can uh, correctly with this new tool uh, hash um, individual blocks while keeping their order. So I produce the same CID uh, as fast as the CPU will allow. So that's awesome. And uh, this will definitely find its way into GoIPFS at some point. Uh, there is actually a link in the, uh, in the document where you can see proof of uh, things just being uh, amount of course times faster uh, for the same CID. And uh, that's pretty much all I have for now. Amazing. I look forward to all the uh, GitHub issues that have been saying things like, why is GoFFS using all available CPU? Because it's really efficient. It's not. 
Yes. Okay, uh, next up, Stardust, transport slash discovery. Hey all, so regarding Stardust, the deployment to PR with the Docker file and the also Prometheus instrumentation was merged in last week. So this basically will allow the infra team to easily deploy the, the servers as well as our LIPTP and IPFS users, as this was also added to Docker app and it will be way easier for them to deploy. So now I'm uh, waiting on the final comments on the JS IPFS and JS LIPTP browser examples and integration PRs. And uh, with that, I hope to this week uh, get the final release of Stardust shipped and uh, follow up with the uh, infra, infra team of uh, uh, LIPTP to deploy a couple of servers so that we can have people experimenting with it. And that's it for me. Awesome, I will get to that PR as soon as possible. Um, anyone got any questions about that? Okay, on to, on to our new Rust implementation. This is a, this is super exciting. Uh, is this the first Rust update? It's, I think it's the first one I've heard. Um, so I'm very, very excited about this. So take it away, Rust, Rust OKS initiative. All right, yes. Um, <clears throat> we are working through a dev grant right now from, from Protocol, uh, very graciously given to us. And um, phase, there's three phases of the grant, phase 1.0, 1.1, and 1.2. Uh, phase 1.0 is complete. And we've submitted the uh, milestone report there. I've linked that in the notes so you can read through what we've, what we've done. It's mostly just set up and getting the conformance testing framework running. And then from there, we're running that against uh, four endpoints per phase as we're working through. Right now, phase 1.1, 1 .1, um, I would love to blame it all on the global pandemic that's going on right now, but unfortunately we had some problems internally too, uh, dealing with Rust libp2p, uh, some incompatibilities there, or some things we had to work around, uh, and some refactoring that we had to do caused a, little, a bit of a delay, but I think it's gonna, only gonna be about a week. Um, and we've notified the appropriate people at protocol uh, about that. Um, there's eight endpoints, two of them are done, one of them is almost done. And then from the, uh, yeah, yeah, two are done, one's almost done, and one is in progress for phase 1.1. And then phase 1.2, we'll be able to tackle bit swap, refs, block, and DAG. And that should give people what they need to create some IPLD applications. So that should be very exciting at the end of all that. That's all from me. Anybody got any questions about hey, Professor Ross? I've got a quick one, or hopefully a quick one. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, so you, you've mentioned like endpoints quite a lot. Is the work just to, um, to have like a HTTP API available, or or is there a Rust CLI tool as well? Uh, the, the yeah, so we have an, an executable that, as of right now, is a CLI that uh, gives you init and daemon, and then from there it spins up all the appropriate HTTP endpoints. Um, our metric that we're using is the number of HTTP endpoints that are implemented um, by running the interface. IPFS core tests as well as the interop IPFS slash interop tests against it. Um, so CLI full, you know, to be able to type IPFS DAG add whatever is not in the scope of the grant as it's written, um, but all the HTTP endpoints uh, will be. Right. So you can yeah in it create a daemon and then interact with it through the HTTP API as you as you please. So then I guess. Yeah, and it's also, I'm sorry, it's also uh, installable as a crate, you know, a Rust library, so you can use it within other Rust app applications as well, which is also very awesome. Gotcha. Cool, thank you. No problem. Okay, uh, moving on to the other initiatives. Uh, so, Unix FS v1.5, I kind of think we should tell this out of the notes now, because it's shipped in terms of JS and then in Go, I think there's a bounty for it. Um, uh, can we have that back? Yeah. Because it, well, it's not implemented in Go. 
uh, and we now actually have a we have progress on that. Yeah, yeah. There's a, there's a... Uh, we have a, a grant hmm. uh, for Go. If I can find it, Bounty. Cool. Uh, so our performance uh, in Chase Hyper Pass. So this is still the the pinning work. Um, we had to catch up. We really, uh, haven't had a chance to. Uh, integrate the feedback from that into the PR. Um, the next one is distributed signaling, Jacob. Yeah, we're just going to be looking at uh, spec work in Q2 to get the spec finalized for that. So we can start working on the potentially go um, for the JS implementation. Uh, migration to multi-hash keys in the block store. Can you give an update about that? As, yeah, as mentioned there, there's discussion ongoing about whether that is the right approach. And it's not going into this release. And we'll see. Yeah. Uh, last week I called for a design meeting. I'm actually going to, we're going to hold that design meeting, but I'm going to try to put it until April because at the moment we have way too many questions at the uh -huh. So it's probably best to not focus on that at the moment. Cool, that's the end of all the initiatives. Uh, anything for design review proposals? Blockers and asks? Questions? Answers? Uh, I actually have a question uh, about the command package, but that's just for Stephen. Uh, if you have time after the call, so I don't take everybody else's time. Uh, how the JSON communication works between the team and the CLI? Uh, parking lot, anything, anything else to discuss today? I guess not. In that case, we are at the end of the meeting. Uh, if you do make sure you fill in your uh, async updates, that would be lovely. Um, thank you very much for coming. This has been the IPFS core weekly sync for Monday the 23rd of March 2020. Um, stay safe out there, wash your hands, don't touch your face. I think I've touched my face, my face about five times during this meeting. I literally cannot stop doing it. Um, don't be like me. Uh, stay safe. Um, see you next week. Thanks, Alex. Bye. Bye, folks. Thanks, Alex. Cheers, guys.